Alrighty, so we, I, have officially finished the first design of one of many different cabinets with the same uh, potential end result. The smallest box possible to achieve a minus 60B at 35 Hertz. This driver actually gave me a small little bit of a challenge like they do most instances so i don't know what i'm on about uh, but let's go and jump in and have a look at what i've managed to come up with Alrighty, so you can see let me just remove the side panel i actually landed up coming in and redoing the fx parameters right so you can see we have a little bit more here than we had before. I ran into some uh, sticky problems. You know, unfortunately my brain can't work and talk at the same time. I just don't have that functionality. Um, so typical male, there you go woman, you have officially won that argument. So lots of bracing throughout the cabinet. You of course are looking at a cabinet which has an overall volume of about 172 liters. We of course need a cabinet which is 160 liters and we do in fact have that with our volume once we exclude all of the bracing things like handles as well as the driver we drop down to about 162 liters uh, so you've got a little bit more space but uh, just to show you here look at this we've got one entire cab plus a little bit of material to spare uh, that's great that is a cost-effective cabinet to produce. So with those offcuts, you can obviously put some additional bracing in and really stiffen up those panels. Remember guys, stiff panels is generally good. You want a very, very stiff box. So I've put some uh, bracing in. You of course could actually go out and, and you know use that last little bit of material and um, you know get it nice and rigid. So let's go and have a look at what the performance landed up looking like. Let me actually come down here and pop off these filters. Filters, yes, you and you. Oh, wrong one. I'll tell you about the secondary project that's hiding in the background there. So typically speaking, um, with our goal being minus 60 Bs at 35 Hertz, it does present some challenges because we've got to fit everything into the box and vent velocity is often very hard to control port size very hard to control but you know we've got some tips and tricks as i explained to you in the previous video so let's go and have a look at now right off the bat i'm going to tell you that when i start these types of projects especially for small cabinets the very first thing i go and do is make sure i smash all the power that i can into the cabinet to see where we land up on xmax I know in South Africa, at least, if you guys are going to use your system, you are absolutely going to hammer it. And uh, I need to make sure that I can keep that hammering in mind, right? So, whacked off to 1500 watts right into the system. And very quickly, we had to try and keep things under control because we faced two problems. Cone excursion, right? We don't want this tail end of here. This is where drivers mechanically fail. So for you guys who are going to be ripping spiders and you know pulling them right off the frame and bottoming your speakers out and so forth, the reason why that happens is because you've got nothing to protect it over here. And you assume just because the speaker is rated out to 1500 watts that things won't break. Well, I've got news for you. That is certainly not how it works. Right, so cone excursion is one of those things that we needed to keep under control. The second thing is our airport velocity. In this particular instance, we can see that our vent velocity is well above our desired 16 meters per second. Just an FYI, 16 meters per second is relatively quite low. Um, but it means we guaranteed no vent noise. You can sneak it up a little bit, you know, but try and keep it low. Honestly, guys, try and, try and do things by the book and you'll find that, generally speaking, you'll have a very nice sound in the enclosure. Right, so we had to address XMAX and we had to address vent velocity. So the first way we are going to go about doing this is quite simple is playing around with the high pass filters so with a high pass filter butterworth third order set to 35 hertz not only does it bring our vent velocity into tow but it also helps us with our cone displacement now in some ways this level of cone displacement is looking very very healthy but almost too healthy remember we want that speaker to be moving and pumping air at any given instance 
So in some ways, I wouldn't mind this tail end being a little bit higher, but unfortunately, because the cabinet has got so much cone control because it is so compact for this driver, the effect is just kind of bonus. So keep that in mind. We may be not pumping as much air as we would like. However, we have absolute great levels of cone displacement in this cabinet. Okay, so we obviously achieved our minus 60 Bs at 35 Hertz with our filter on. And I'll maybe show you a bit of a difference between the two. So I'm not going to be able to quite get, oh goodness gracious me, I'm on the wrong level. Right, so 34.95, guys, I'm going to call it 35 minus 60 Bs. We hit our target with our high pass filter on. And a high pass for if you can see we're obviously going a lot lower but it's about trying to find the balance okay in terms of things like maximum power you can see we are so healthy on this we basically run into our full power down to 30 hertz with our filter on which is great nothing's gonna fail we're not running short of cone displacement or power handling and x max and blah 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 we're looking healthy okay total spl you know, this is a bit of a cash winning too, because again, guys, um, when we look at something like this and you will see some form of specs, you know, so yeah, at 100 hertz, when I see you saying we'll do a maximum of 127 dBs at 1500 watts, and then you go and have a look at some spec sheet from a brand and it says 172 decibels, earth shattering, world expanding. Well, when you get into speaker box design, you'll realize for a single driver, realistically speaking, to go into these high levels of SPLs like brands claim is absolute hogwash, right? In reality, this is far more realistic. And even if you were to measure them, you would find that you're not going to get these great levels because, well, you can buy those very drivers, download the spec sheet and follow this course and you'll find that same thing kind of happens. You will see numbers that will float anywhere between 122 and 125 dBs, a little bit higher, a little bit less, depends on the driver. Um, and that's typically what you can expect. Okay, but still SBL looking nice and healthy. We've got a very nice gradual roll off and that's very appealing to the ears because it makes it sound a little bit more full on the bottom end. And really that's all there is to it. Uh, so let's jump in and have a look at our oversized cabinets and I'll explain to you all about this in a second. So what we've done is we've almost got like a bit of a hybridized cabinet here. It's not exactly a minus 6db shelf, it's kind of a minus 3db shelf, but it's not really that. It is a bit of a high Q, I don't normally like these tunings, blah, 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 blah. And uh, of course, you know, we've got to do the same course of action. So in comparison, you can see that we have sacrificed a little bit of output in the upper end of the range to dramatically increase performance on the bottom end. So if we look in just at our transfer function um, magnitude window, right? Here is, I think that's about 35 hertz. No, where is 35 hertz? Somewhere over here. Let's come to this one. Uh, yep. Right, again. Okay. Again, minus six is one lower, right? Basically 35 hertz minus six dBs in our compact cabinet. Let's grab our little calculator out here. And so we are going to have a look at the difference. So minus six versus mm, 35 hertz. Yeah, so we've got about four and a half, five dBs difference down at 30 hertz, uh, 35 hertz, which is a lot, gentlemen. Considering the following that we've actually turned this secondary cabinet down from 1500 watts down to 800 watts, so something that you will see in a bit. However, where the big deal starts to bring in the clouds, we are achieving the same minus six dBs you know, roll off at, come on, get close you can do it no you can't okay we are now rolling into the very low 20s that is ridiculous so of course we've got to worry about things like cone displacement and so forth so we had to come in and step down on the power not only did we need to step down on the power but like with our previous box design we needed to add in a high pass filter to keep things under control 
and uh, our minus 6 db point is still looking absolutely fantastic in our oversized cabinets 220 liters internally guys so substantially substantially bigger right i don't know if i'm going to get any closer i would like to you know this is where um other tools like um base box come in handy all right so we're still achieving minus 6 dbs at 27 hertz and if we were to compare the two overall i mean minus 6 dbs versus i don't know where we're 27 hertz eh? yeah i mean we're talking well over 10 dbs so big difference in transfer function magnitude all right so let's go and have a look at the spl because this is where things come into place so there's always a trade-off behind how low we go in what size box versus how much power we can put into the driver if we go and have a look at our cone excursion first you can see cone excursion is looking nice and healthy we've got a little bit more shenanigans happening on the bottom so we are pumping a little bit more air of course we can increase the power a little bit more um, that's really up to you. I wouldn't though. Um, I like to keep uh, things a little bit lower, but we are out at 800 watts, right? So if we compare 800 watts versus 1,500 watts, I'm going to take it from about 50 hertz here. You can see at 50 hertz on our compact cabinets, we're doing 125.4, and here we are doing 122.1. So again, you know, two dBs, two and a bit more dBs difference guys you know is it that much not really because that's such a small amount the likelihood is if you put these two cabinets together you might not really be able to tell that one's much louder than the other and i'll be very honest with you we don't hear so well in this bottom end of the region okay so even with the big power difference once we get to about 36 hertz we can see how our larger cabinet even though we are doing less power almost half right we are in fact at 30 hertz doing 119.7 give or take and you know 114 so gentlemen that's basically 5 dbs worth of difference between the extended low frequency cab and our compact cab down at 30 hertz so if you are looking for those extensions yes it absolutely is possible with a slightly well not slightly a third bigger cabinet another 60 liters on top of that you can get those lows uh, besides that in terms of high pass filters or low pass filters again guys this is really up to you it depends on where you like to run things typically speaking i don't like running anything past 80 hertz if i can avoid it um, simply because I will just use a better speaker, a better, bigger speaker for the application to help try and project. Um, at the end of the day, crossover points sound better when they are lower. That applies for high frequencies connecting to mid ranges or mid bass drivers. And the same thing can be said for mid bass drivers connecting to subs. So there you have it. The Lavochi SAF 184.03, we landed up with a cabinet which is around like 172 liters um which then boils down to 160 liter cabinet and uh, one sheet of material so if you would like to buy the plants for this i am going to be making a cnc version of this i'll be making the full out available to you guys um, but i'm sure a lot of you people i can simply just steal from what you see right <laughs> But uh, it's it's great. One sheet of plywood makes us an extremely cost-effective um, unit to make, especially if you're going to be applying a little bit of quality. You don't have to go buy that shutter ply nonsense. Go out and go get yourself some real plywood. You know, you essentially could do a full birch plywood build for under three thousand rand if you do it yourself. I mean, how's that for value? So for less than ten thousand rand, you could basically build the a really great quality subwoofer system for myself gareth the sound guy i will see you another time